Hey folks, welcome back to another video. And Heiner asked me yesterday, I'm trying to figure out if those modulators can have a signal flow. So for example, those random modulations, coupled effect, tuning, and then be quantized. And this is what this video is about, um, how you can quantize modulation signals in Bitwig Studio. So let's say you have here a test tone device, which just outputs a sign, and you can dial in a frequency here. And because it's it's frequencies, right, you can also hit in between notes. So it's not always that you hit exactly notes you want to hit, right? <clears throat> so I did also a bit of music with this with test tone device yesterday. And uh, also on a side note, we got in the last update here, we got a Dirac option, which you can use. Get this click which you can use to sample impulse responses very handy. So back to the sine wave here. So let's dial in here actually C3, so we can type in. And yeah, we need to modulate now here the frequencies with the random mod. Um, let's go to 16 nodes. We can see we get notes all over the place and frequencies all over the place and not even notes. So what you can do is you can use a quantizer for this. And the, the big problem with the, with the quantizer is actually, it's not a problem, but you can only um, make equally spaced steps. So there's no way of doing something like a C major scale. Um, where you have like whole step and then whole step and then half step and something like this. Um, so you can only do uh, equally spaced steps. But I'll show, show in a minute how it works. So let's go do an instrument track here. Open up um, a note piano roll. So let's see. Uh, we have C major scale. We have C, we have D, we have E, F, G, A, B, and then again. Uh, C. So you can see we have your whole step, whole step, then half step, then whole step, whole step, half step, half step. So it's not equally spaced, right? Also A minor. It's the same. So we have, we have whole step, half step, and then whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, and so on. So it's it's a different, you know, it's, diff it's a different spacing uh, sometimes here. So it's not easy to, yeah. To do with a, a quantizer because you can only do equally spaced steps. But it's actually the case that all of these scales and all of the MIDI keyboard is actually built from fifths. And if you start at C here and use uh, fifth steps, and uh, then you can rebuild all the scales, you can rebuild the whole MIDI keyboard. So let's start at C here and then go up a fifth which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven semitones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 And so on, right? So, so you can space out your everything and you, get see, you can see you hit all the, the white keys here. Let's go down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And at some point you get then here the black, uh, the black keys in there. Also, the, uh, by the way, the sharps. You get all the sharps in there. So you can rebuild the whole uh, 12 notes in one octave spread across all the octaves. So this is how you build a circle of fifths, how you build the uh, scales, how you build a MIDI keyboard or um, a piano roll. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and so on. I probably made an error here at some point, but just to make this clear how this works. So now that we have this, uh, we can equally space here um, this with the quantizer. So instead of using um, maybe modulate here this with the macro, so we can dial this in. So we modulate the input and then we push here the resolution to nine and then we modulate with the quantizer. We modulate this here by exactly 64 steps. Okay. 
you can see here when we go up, we start at C4. Next one is G, exactly like I showed you on the piano roll. Next one is D, A. And you can see we have a small little drift here. We drift off these keys. And um, I think what this is, is it's just intonation. We divide basically all the octaves into equally spaced steps. And it's not what's happening on the piano or actually in an equal temperament where you have like a small little uh, correction in there to make it, I don't know, more Western sounding. I don't know why it's, I have no idea about the history of that. Um, so what we can do is we can correct this here by typing in 9.015, uh, 9.15 exactly. So we compensate for this drift. So now we have here uh, C, G, D, A, E, B, and then we got to the uh, sharps, F sharp, right? We can also push this here, the bipolar and go down. We go, got F here, and then we go into the sharps here. So we can target all the notes, uh, get chromatic with this. And all you have to do now is to select only a collection out of this. So let's say from F to, uh, what's this here, B6. And then you get all the white notes. If you get all the white notes, you can represent A minor and C major with this. So what you can do now is use a second macro here and just say I want to go here to F. It's the first white note. The next one is A sharp. So it's 15. And go up here up until B6 because the next one is F sharp. So this one. And you can target basically with this slider here uh, all white keys. So instead of modulating the frequency directly, we modulate here all the white keys, which selects only the white notes out of the chromatic notes uh, spread across the whole keyboard from this input and this quantize here. So just modulate this. And now we basically get all the notes of A minor or C major. Maybe add a delay here. So this is um, yeah, the order here. Um, we modulate with a random modulator here, this macro knob, which selects all the white notes out of the chromatic notes here, which are all the notes on the keyboard. And then we use this input here to modulate the quantize and the quantizer uh, quantizes this to yeah, all the chromatic or equally spaced fifth steps we I just showed you here. So it's a, yeah, it's a bit complex, but if you followed basically what I, what I said, you can easily make sense out of it. And um, this is the complicated way of doing this. And there's a much easier way I'll show you in a minute. So maybe this is interesting for you because you can also do here instead of using this and this, and maybe go back to this, and we modulate here also the full range of the quantizer with this. But now we go back here maybe to modulate this by only 12, so only one octave, so we modulate the, the frequencies here by one octave, and then we divide this also into 12 equally steps. So what we get now is also chromatic, uh, but only within one octave. Right, so we have here C, C sharp, C sharp, 
E, F, F sharp, G. So this is again, so modulating this by 12, resolution is 12, so you get all the notes within one octave. That's also something maybe you need at some point, I don't know. So there's a more easier option of course, and this one is, uh, yeah, the last tip of the day. You just use a Parsec 8 <laughs> modulator here, like this, and you maybe go to C3. Uh, and then you maybe want to put this on hold, so you can use here the face thing to switch between uh, different steps. And each steps, each step dials in basically a note. So the first one is the root note here, so we leave this uh, unmodulated. The second one is maybe, let's say, go up seven semitones, which is the fifth. This one here is going up one octave. This one is going down five semitones. This one is maybe going up a minor third. This one is going down one octave. This one goes up maybe five semitones and so on. So you can use this here and then Step through all these notes pretty easily. Close this down. Use a random mod here. And then modulate with the random mod here. Just a face. You get also kind of a random melody generator or something like this. You can also smooth out here the transitions. So you get these bend, bending sounds. You can also use a LFO here. Something like this. And modulate the volume. Maybe use a random thing and change this. Smooth it out. Yeah, maybe also modulate the speed. Or oh, actually not the speed, the time base. That you can't switch here with the modulator the uh, the pull down would be a nice effect, but it, it is what it is. So now that you know how you kind of change or quantize uh, frequency signals, you can do the same not only with the test tone, you can also use it for the filter device here, right? And to uh, change here the frequencies of that. So maybe use a quantize here. Dial in the resolution of 9.15. You can easily remember this, right? <laughs> then modulate this here by the amount of 64. Then use a, a macro knob here. Modulate this. And you also know that if you go down here by minus 15%, you hit F and then you modulate this here up until you get, I don't know, B, 6. There's a random here. Maybe 
use a random here also for the resonance. We get nice little extra sounds, clicks in there. So you can basically use this everywhere where you have frequencies and you can dial stuff like this in. You can also use it on the EQ uh, plus for instance, right? Um, so let's use here the input. Um, yeah, let's, let's use all of this quantizer and put this over to the EQ. And maybe also use a random mod here. And we can modulate here or start at C5, for instance. And modulate here by exactly 64. Go down to C2. Okay, so th this this works basically everywhere. It also works on um, I don't know polysynth, the frequency knob, or something like this. It gets a bit harder when you use it for VSTs. Um, let's say um, I tried it yesterday on Crane Space here, and in Crane Space you have your pitch knob, right? And you can pitch by up to 24 semitones or go down to minus 24 semitones. So here the problem is that the actually value that you get in Bitwig for modulating, let's use a macro here, is not, uh, is not semitones. So if you modulate this, you can see here we can modulate up to 0 0.5. And 0 0.5 represents actually 24 semitones pitch up um, so you have to make the math in 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 the head to actually get the right amount of modulation value or modulation amount you need to pitch up maybe for one semitone or two semitones. So I had a version of Crane Space before. I think it's 2.0 where it actually actually showed me here with the pitch, but I think it was a bug more or less. It showed me actually here how many semitones I pitched up. Um, um, Maybe let's see. I think I still have it on there, right? Yeah, it's the old, the old VST2 version. Um, here it kind of works. So you have your pitch up to 24. Okay. So you can use a macro here. And modulate. You can see here, it shows me the, exactly the, the, um, semitone amount so I can use here the um, parsec 8 which to hold you can use here the face and modulate with the second one to to many uh, seven semitones here we go to 12 semitones Here we go to minus 12. And this is also the problem here with the, uh, with the pitch algorithm. If you, you can't dial in here and scale because it depends on what kind of sound you send in. So let's say you send in C and you pitch up by um, a minor third, which is three semitones. Um, you end up on D sharp, right? Which is not in the scale of C, of which is in the scale of C minor. But if you send in actually, I don't know, a B, which is one step lower, a B, and then you go uh, three semitones up, you end up on 
D, which is not in the scale of C minor. So it's actually advised when you go in with rich harmonic material, it can only pitch up by maybe an octave or go down an octave or go up maybe seven semitones or, you know, something like this works because uh, per it's perfect fifth and a perfect fourth and a perfect octave works. But if you go then into maybe two semitones or one semitone, then it can lead to, uh, yeah, pretty dissonant results sometimes because it depends on with what kind of sound you're going in. Um, here with the frequency knob and with this kind of stuff, it, it's not really that important because it's absolute. But this one here, it's a pitch algorithm, which is relative. So when you send in a B and shift it up by two, three semitones, it leads to different results, right? Um, it's a bit hard to explain uh, actually in words, but you probably know what I mean. So here we go, maybe 24 semitones up. Um, maybe you go seven down. Yeah, let's stick with this. So now we can modulate here with the random knob. Again, the face. And maybe bring in the feedback here up a bit. Make this a bit slower. Bring this maybe in front of the delay here. Take my reverb here. So you get nice musical results. And I also showed you the problem uh, with uh, VSTs. So that's why I hope a lot of these VSTs um, become lab uh, plugins in the future where I think this is not that big of a problem anymore. Um, but yeah, I also showed you how you can uh, quantize signals to a scale with the quantizer and with the Parsec 8 here. I think Parsec 8 is actually the simplest version of that because you can dial in the notes you want and the pitch uh, intervals you want and you get nice interesting results. Okay. So yeah, guys, I hope this was uh, a bit helpful for you. Thanks for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.